Bailouts and other support in the wake of COVID-19's devastating impact on the nation's economy have put the fiscal health of the 50 states front and center of political debate in D.C. over issues like budget management and emergency spending, even leading one prominent U.S. senator to float the idea that states could declare bankruptcy. So what should we make of states and the state of their financial health in the midst of this COVID-19 crisis? Well, I'm joined for perspective by Adam Millsap, an economist and fellow at the Charles Koch Institute. He joins me tonight from Arlington, Virginia. Adam, great to see you. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me on. Now, let's start with this. Take us through the magnitude of this debt crisis for the states. How big a hole are they in? You know, it varies by state. Um, some states that have really bad pension problems, Illinois, uh, Kentucky, Connecticut, um, you know, there's some, there's some big debts there. Uh, as far as what the impact's going to be from the shutdowns and, and the slowing of the economy, there are some estimates that have been floating around about how big the decline in revenues will be. So what the current budget gaps might be for the fiscal year of 2021 and uh, estimates range for all of the states combined from between 160 billion to up to 250 billion um, fall in revenue across the 50 states. And that, that'll depend, you know, based on the industry within the states, um, what kind of revenue Didn't streams they rely on. So when you think of a state like Nevada or Florida, there's no income tax. They rely a lot on tourism. So sales taxes, hotel taxes and fees and things like that. Obviously, with, with COVID-19, you know, a lot of hotels and tourist attractions have been shut down. So um, those states might see a bigger drop in revenue than a state that relies on more like professional service type jobs that have mostly been working from home. So the incomes have still been happening. Income taxes can still be taken out of that. So it'll vary across the states of how deep of a hole they get into. Now, you argue in your recent Forbes article that there are other options to help states and municipalities than simply the idea of, okay, stimulus four, right, or phase four of federal spending. What options are in the current law to help states and local governments tonight? So as far as just giving money to people and businesses, the, the original CARES Act did a lot of that. There was the payment protection program that provided loans to small businesses to keep their payroll going. And so obviously, if that payroll is, is being maintained, then as is the revenue streams coming out of that as far as income taxes go. So the support to individuals and businesses can also help prop up state revenues if they have the income tax uh, revenue stream. Um, you know, states can always go to the municipal bond market and the Federal Reserve created a special facility um, that allows that is enabling up to $500 billion of short term loans to uh, states. So one to three years, they can sell municipal bonds, the Fed will buy them. And uh, that can also help states close some of their um, revenue gaps. Um, and then states might also just have to be strategic about what kind of uh, spending they want to maintain. So there might be some cuts they have to do. One, one easy way for states to make some money and a way that would improve their economy going forward to be to cut out some of their um, you know, special tax incentives that are for particular businesses or industries. So some of the corporate tax incentives to help the states save money today, also improve their tax code and, and foster more economic growth going forward. So, and then the rainy day funds, right? A lot of states have money saved up in their rainy day funds that they are, that are designed to be tapped into under circumstances like we're facing right now. Well, I want to bring that up now, so I'm glad you segued into it for me, because as you said, states are on different footing in terms of savings for these rainy days. How about Missouri and Arkansas? Where do they fit in terms of having these rainy day funds that they can tap for this proverbial flood that they're facing right now? Outbreaks. So in, in general, so overall, states are in better shape for this crisis than they were going into the last, the Great Recession, back in 2008 and 2009. Rainy day funds are in a much better place across all 50 states. When it comes to Arkansas and Missouri, they're definitely not at the top of preparedness. Um, Missouri has about 7% of their budget saved up for a rainy day, so about $650 million. Arkansas is a little bit worse. They have about 3% of their budget saved up for a rainy day. So neither one of them are in a particularly uh, strong place. Um, when you compare that to other states like Wyoming, um, North Dakota, uh, New Mexico, they have over 25% of their budget saved up in their rainy day fund. So they would be able to 
withstand a pretty significant drop in revenue and be able to tie most of that over with their just by drawing down their rainy day fund if they needed to without additional borrowing or resorting to some kind of tax increases or things like that. So, like I said, in general, the states are in a better place. Um, some some doing you know much better much better than others. Now, at the top of the segment, I referenced the idea of bankruptcy. Of course, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky sort of said, well, maybe they ought to just declare bankruptcy if they're in that bad a shape. How does that work? I mean, would bankruptcy be a good idea for states? It's never been done, but might it be something that they should think about? Yeah, that's an idea a lot of people are tossing around currently. Uh, states can't declare bankruptcy. Um, local governments can, so school districts or counties or municipalities can declare bankruptcy under our current bankruptcy code, but there's no provision under bankruptcy code for states. Um, the federal government, it, it's there, there's some constitutional questions about how exactly a state bankruptcy might work. Some think that the federal government could just allow it by altering the bankruptcy law. Others are, are less certain that that would be the case. But either way, it's, I mean, for dealing with the current crisis, even if you thought there was no constitutional issues and, and we should allow it, it's not clear that it would help states today. Any bankruptcy proceedings are likely to be challenged in court. When Detroit tried to do their bankruptcy, it was held up for a while as they tried to deal with different lawsuits and things like that. Because of the um, unknown nature of how states could declare bankruptcy, it would, it would oh, almost inevitably have oh, to go yay. up to the Supreme Court oh, um, to figure out if they were actually allowed to do it. So that would take years. So it would not really help states today anyway, even if we decided that was a that was a valid that was a valid thing to do. So really, any state bankruptcy would be a solution for for another day down the line. And I think most things have to go through the Supreme Court these days. So yeah, you're right. <laughs> They're going to be pretty busy. Adam Millsap, thanks so much. You're from the Charles Koch Institute. You're a fellow there, and we appreciate you being on with us, sharing your expertise about this unfolding story. Thank you so much. And we'll be back after this.